The complexity of understanding sarcoidosis, as Dr. Blowett was alluding to, lies in the number of ways in which it can manifest. She talked about the structural manifestations, things you see on echocardiography or ultrasound of the heart, MRI in terms of looking for scarring, but now we're going to segue into the electrical elements. As we explained earlier, the symptoms associated with sarcoidosis might be highly variable. And some of these might be associated with changes in the heart rate or the heart rhythm. The interesting thing is, historically, the majority of patients at the time they are diagnosed as having possible, probable, or definite cardiac sarcoidosis present with abnormal electrical findings. As a result of this, a close collaboration is important between the electricians or electrophysiologists as well as the clinical cardiologists, aka the expert diagnosticians. One of the preliminary tests we get in any evaluation on the electrical elements of cardiac sarcoidosis is something called an ECG or electrocardiogram. The electrocardiogram gives us information about how the heart is activating. Specifically, it can tell us do the chambers of the heart talk to one another consistently? How is the heart activating? Are there blocks in any of the normal electrical highways that we sometimes see in cardiac sarcoidosis? The problem with an ECG, however, it only shows us about a 10 second moment in time. And sometimes if somebody is having symptoms, such as what we call palpitations or feeling of skipped heartbeats or fast heartbeats or slow heart rhythms, a single ECG might not be enough. So then we get into more prolonged monitoring and there are a number of different options for this, but one of the pr primary tests we obtain in our cardiac sarcoidosis practice is at least a 24-hour Holter monitor. The Holter monitor is a monitor that you wear that has patches attached to the chest similar to an electrocardiogram, and we look for several things on this Holter monitor. Number one, we look for over the course of 24 hours, are there any episodes where the heart rhythm suddenly becomes too slow? where the activity of the heart speaking to itself doesn't happen. We also look for rhythms that might be too fast, rhythms that might be occurring in the upper chamber, such as atrial fibrillation, which is commonly seen in patients with cardiac sarcoidosis, or perhaps more ventricular arrhythmias or ventricular tachycardia. The ventricles are the bottom chamber of the heart. And when they start going fast on all their lonesome, in not in relationship to the upper chambers. This can sometimes be associated with people getting dizzy, actually passing out, or in some cases, sudden death. And thus, this in particular is something we really want to identify. The last thing we look for on the Holter monitor is evidence of extra beats, or so-called PVCs, or premature ventricular contractions. Depending on where the patchy involvement occurs in the heart, we might identify that there might be extra heartbeats that might be resulting from the active inflammation or the scar that's left behind. We are going to be segueing later on a little bit into prognosis and how to deal with the possibility of risk in many patients with cardiac sarcoidosis. But one of the diagnostic elements that underlies this to see how the electrical system of the heart might or might not be involved in a, in a specific patient with cardiac sarcoidosis is a more invasive study called an electrophysiology study. Electrophysiology studies help us understand, okay, maybe the Holter looks okay. Maybe the ECG looks relatively okay. But looking at a more close level at the heart, is there evidence of any disease in the conduction system? If we stimulate or stress the heart using our stimulation tools, can this cause us to identify problems that might happen in the future? Finally, and this is a close alliance that we as electrophysiologists have with our colleagues in the interventional lab, we have started working together to perform something we call voltage-guided biopsies. As Dr. Blauet alluded to, the cardiac sarcoidosis can be extremely patchy. And in order to offer a definitive diagnosis of the disease, we need some sort of evidence on what we call pathology. In other words, taking a piece of tissue 
being able to look at it under a microscope and say, yes, this is cardiac sarcoidosis. Or sarcoidosis elsewhere with inflammation in the heart, suggesting that this sarcoidosis that exists elsewhere also involves the heart. The difficulty is honing in on exactly what is involved, because if you take a piece of normal tissue, it's going to look normal. As a result of this, we do this procedure in some patients where they have no other targets for biopsy outside of the heart called a voltage-guided biopsy, where we essentially use our tools that we use in electrophysiology to identify abnormalities in the heart and then hone in on those as areas we should be obtaining tissue from in order to optimize our ability to diagnose.